Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. So uh, listen, big week. So uh, I was reading, doing the research for the show. So last week we had a big show. And by the way, uh, crypto apparently is uh, <laughs> is a touchy subject with our audience. And you never know where information is going to hit or land with the people that watch and listen to the show. But crypto, apparently, hot topic. And so uh, pro and con, meaning I think there's more con because I, I'm starting to think our audience might skew a little bit older. Maybe their kids are involved with crypto, maybe them not so much, right? And so like, why are you spending time with crypto? Because it affects markets greatly. And so I'm reading uh, this week and uh, when I'm reading, I was, I was absolutely astounded. Because I've never seen the stat, by the way, before we go on stock and market lovers, uh, there's a big bond trade I want to share with you in a moment or two. I think bond prices are going higher. So just hang with me here as I get through the front part of the show here. But Dan Stort, Alex Katutis, Hunter Mazingo, uh, Don Vandeboord, and our esteemed producer, uh, Zach, is with us uh, this week. Okay, So I read a stat, Danny, that I don't think I've read anywhere else uh, in the history of stats, in the whole world of stats. I've never read anything like I'm about to share with you. Last week, or maybe this week, 800,000 crypto accounts were wiped off the face of the earth. Ouch. And it's not, it's not like, like they were, ha- what time were they hacked? No, 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 no. It was, they were leveraged out. They, they were margined out. Got margin called, wiped out. Yeah. And we, let, let me just unpack that for a second real quick because it's a really big deal. And so uh, you, before you uh, get cynical at home and you're, and you're listening to this and you're saying, well, they deserve it, Tim. They shouldn't be taking out that leverage. And, <laughs> and gosh darn it, Tim, when are those kids going to learn? Look, it ain't kids. I think it's people our age, too. I, I think they're oh, all. Oh, we've got, we've got yeah, some yeah. clients. And by the way, when I say our, that, that are into Bitcoin. When I say that, our okay. age, so let me, just, let me just make sure. Because people think Hunter's eight. A hunter, is, <laughs> hunter is 62. He's just an assassin with a good moisturizing regimen. You wouldn't know. So, it. He's like Benjamin. What's that? Uh, Benjamin Biden. Benjamin Biden. Yeah, the guy that goes right. backward. Yeah. Wait, wait. Hunter goes. Oh, oh Hunter's 152. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt plays the movie. Oh yeah. my God! Did you just call Hunter Brad Pitt? No, no, no. Well, that's I said like Brad I Pitt Brad plays Pitt. The, in the movie. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so spitting in it. Yes, spitting in. So, but it's a really big deal. <laughs> Hunter with the late second. Thank you. Coming in. <laughs> Coming in hot. He's grateful too. Yeah, I'll appreciate it. Hunter's a great that's how he gets you into his world. And then before you know it, he's stabbing you like that's an right. evil bunny. Comes out of nowhere. And so um is evil bunny a thing? I don't know. I did I was thinking like sour. Bugs bunny is, is kind of evil. Is more. <laughs> <laughs> Bugs Bunny. You know what? They those cartoons don't hold up in uh 2021. They're, they're a funny no. sort of watch now. No, they no. Don't. I don't think they hold up. I think the whole thing where, no, they don't. Uh, where, they're, where they're hunting and there's an anvil and there's a bunch of uh, mm-hmm. pranks and stuff. Can't I, have any guns in, in cartoons no, I, anymore. Yeah, and cartoons, Wiley Coyote's out. Cartoons, yeah. can't take, cartoons can't take a frying pan like they could in the 50s, right? <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. Nobody gets slammed like Tom and Jerry By the way, uh, if you watch, because uh, Remy likes the Charlie Brown, yeah. right? And so uh, peanuts, when, the, when they just go around calling Charlie Brown stupid and blockhead, they're... <laughs> Like, like I don't. It doesn't. Like Remy started walking around going blockhead, blockhead. And, and I'm like, I don't think we can send them to school like this. It doesn't. It doesn't sound very. No, Lucy is mean. Yeah. Anyway, back to the people who got wiped off the face of the earth in crypto land. So it's a really big deal to understand this because I didn't understand the margin. Like we were talking about crypto last week and and interest and compounding interest, and it really touched a nerve with some of the people that watch and listen to the show. And so I'm reading this stuff. I've never like when when people get margined out in a stock market drawdown because they're on too much mm-hmm. leverage mm-hmm. that, you know, and if you don't understand how that works because you're just doing a cash account at home, if it's a non, if it's a taxable account, meaning non IRA stock nerds and market lovers, you typically will get two to one margin. Uh, it depends on your broker. Well, you, know, you can borrow 50% of the you know, cap value. So, some brokers and are treasury treasuries yeah. is 90% stocks are 50. So you'll get 150%. You'll get leverage on your money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But if it goes against you, well, Right. No. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a Captain Obvious sound? 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 I, mean, <laughs> I should get one. You wouldn't let me bring in my little red sound ma- machine. But if you get hit by a bus, it's going to hurt. <laughs> See, that's the thing about buses, Zach, and you step in front of them. 
you'll get hurt. And jump out at you. Yes. Thank, thank you, Dan. Or, That's a cartoon. Hey, look, there's a lot of people watching on YouTube who miss this stuff. Maybe right? the drop where people. he goes, I'm a damn genius. When he's, you know what? From now on, when Danny says the most obvious thing in the room, can we just play I'm a damn genius? I'm a damn genius. Yeah, that's exactly what We need to record that. That's I'll the record that for need. you, and then we can drop it. When on. he says I'm a damn genius. All that's right, it. Right. Now we all know how Sydney feels at home. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to need a soundboard at the end of all this. She's yeah. actually doing that now. I'm a damn genius. saying that. Oh, she does? Yeah, I'll say, why'd you do that, Sydney? She'll look at me because because I'm a damn genius. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Payback. So these hey. accounts get wiped out. And what's what is the and the story is gonna see, like you'll see, and I'll, I'll just come to show you where I read it at. Like up here, the headline is hundred to one leverage. I don't think people it doesn't matter what I think. They, I don't think everybody's leverage is 100 to 1. That's the headline that gets you to click on it. Right, sure. And it, and, and it's it's a really small firm that was giving 100 to 1 leverage, right? But it, that's not the big story here. The big story is where I had it, and I'll just scroll through. It's the – and I'll pa pause the video here, Stock Nerds and Market Lovers, and just read the, the side about lending. Okay, so that's that's the story, right? And so if you had a million dollars in any kind of crypto, right, like you had bought it and you ran it up and it was worth a million dollars, they'll lend against it. Right. And whether you're lending against it to, uh, to do the interest bearing trade that we talked about, like I'll lend that to anybody who wants to short crypto, right? Go ahead, take, take it. You could do that. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, just go to last week's show uh, at Revere Asset. And we, we go over how you can get 8.6% on your stable coins. We'll talk about stable coins here in a moment <laughs> with, with Tether and everything. But you could also get money loaned out to you to do what, Daniel? Pay down but, debt. Or, or yeah, buy cars. Or buy more crypto. Or buy more crypto or buy cars or buy, or buy anything that has nothing to do with cars, planes, and trains. Right. And so uh, staying in, within your account. And there is the issue. And so if you got margined, and here's what here's the psychological thing that happens when people get a margin call. They typically don't put more money up. They let they let the house clean them out. And then some people in certain the opposite of a short squeeze. And, and some people in certain cases will actually owe money to the broker. If anybody remembers GMCR, so GMCR is Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. It's trading about forty-five fifty. It had fallen from grace uh, several years ago. My sister worked at a Green Mountain. Oh, really? Yeah, like 10 years ago, a long time ago. Huh. Yeah. Small world. Yeah. Anyway, glad to, hear the, glad to hear they're doing well. Oh, it's the K-Cups. Right. right. Oh, is that what they're doing now? Well, that, that's what they were doing. How they're do you still do it. How do you compete with Starbucks? You compete with Keurig. That's how. Yeah, so Keurig was Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Um, and so GMCR is uh, is trading somewhere between 45 and 50. And people were short this thing uh, to the hilt. Meaning they were levered up and they were shorting it thinking it, it's going to zero. Going down, yeah. Yeah. And so, as it turns out, private firm Jab came in, uh, which buys up a bunch of coffee brands like Caribou and Pete's, and they rolled up Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, shot up 80 bucks right after the close. There was a dude that started a GoFundMe because he was short this naked. He didn't, he, he didn't have a put spread on. He didn't just have <laughs> straight puts. He was just short the shares. And when and when he got squeezed to the upside, he came knocking he, on his door. Oh yeah, and it turned out you know he did it on margin, and so not not that not only did he get wiped out. Oh by the way, you owe us money. He has to start to go fund me for that. I don't I don't know if anyone funded him, but like what what a horrible position. And, and look now, I will I don't want to bring down the show and the and the joviality of what's happening, but. If anybody remembers, if you're trading options, options report funny, meaning they don't, you have to understand options before you start trading them per se, because sometimes what shows up in your statement or not even your statement on your account screen mm -hmm. isn't accurate because of the way price settles with options, the way it just stops trading, you know, at the end of the day, it's not it's quite quirky. accurate. It's quirky, it's quirky yeah. to say the least. And unfortunately, a young, a young person didn't quite understand this on his Robinhood account. Oh, yeah. And and he, uh, yeah, and and he ended up uh, taking his own life because he thought he owed hundreds of thousands of dollars, and 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 no one because this world is so uh, archaic, and and just um, obtuse, people don't understand how it works, and the layperson, and I don't mean layperson in a derogatory way whatsoever. Like, why would anybody understand that that's not accurate reporting when they open up their bank when they open up their brokerage account? Like you expect it, the assumption is it's accurate. 
And with options pricing, it is not accurate. At yeah, he had sold calls. Yeah. And, and I think he was negative. It said ne negative $900,000 going yeah. into the weekend, but he didn't realize that the brokerage could have bought back those calls and he would have actually only been down a few thousand on the actual trade. Yeah, like, and, and he ended up taking his life because he was so scared. Yeah. And, he, and, and, and it just overwhelmed him. And I don't know if that's happening in the crypto space per se, but I'm telling you, leverage is a great thing when it's going for you, when it's in your favor. And it is the devil. Yep. Works both ways. It, it absolutely works both ways. And I think that's the story here. And we haven't, we haven't heard it all yet. And, and it's just, it's, it, we are watching a live movie being stitched together, being edited every day in this space. Let me show you a chart of Bitcoin here as I go to the chart stack. As I see how, how a professional broadcast, see, I went to the Broadcasting School of Connecticut upstairs from the CBS. You did. And so <laughs> what happens is there, uh, I know that our two story room, I mean, two, two, well, it's just above wow. the CBS. Two room studio. It's above the Minute Clinic. And so, it has a bathroom. Yeah. No, no, you got to go outside. And so here's the thing. I saw Zach knowing he's diligently working on the broadcast. I'm like, hey, Zach, I'm going to go to my charts. Audible, yeah. heads up. Hey, heads up. In. Yeah, and then that's how you do it. That's how you let people – That that's that's called – that they teach you that like day one. Uh -huh. Try to give a heads up to your next move when you're doing live action theater. Consummate professional. Well, that's that's what you get in me. Yeah. Yeah. I Every day. Every show. By God. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. He turns out. Yeah. yeah. So here's a chart of Bitcoin. And by the way, is Bitcoin a short – you couldn't you couldn't pay me to short Bitcoin, and I mean that. I, I, oh, like, just I, do, do, I, do you just do don't hard. know what you're going to wake up to. Yeah. And I do think there's a. I think you're going to see the Biden administration, the SEC. Um, by the way, the new SEC guy, Gary Gensler, does he? He looks like somebody like a ghost, like somebody from the Adams family, like cousin It. <laughs> he's got a white. He's got a white glow to him, like little who, pasty, like little pasty. If, if Austin Gould, Gould yeah, alabaster. <laughs> Something like that. Like if Austin Goolsby looks like the tip of a number two pencil, like the eraser part, this Gary Gensler, can somebody pull up Gary Gensler? I can, got him right now. I got to figure out a way to get him on the, on, on the recording. What is he? He looks like a ghost, right? He looks like a thin man. That's for sure. Like he looks like he's translucent. That's what it is. Gary Gensler looks like he's vellum paper. You like go. you can, you can see through Gary Gensler. Well, I, listen, Gary Gensler, I love you. Don't, don't you come down on me, but I think Gary Gensler is going to come down on Elon Musk. I think Gary Gensler is going to come down on all the shitcoin promoters. You know, like all the people out there that are talking these things up, they're going to get the regulation that everybody's expecting is going to be not maybe on the coin per se or or the uh, or the uh, currency per se. It's going to be on the individual. It's going to be on the reporting. The, no, not 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 reporting the promoting. Yes, and yeah. that and, and I just meant the reporting also. I think they'll do both. Okay. Well, you're, you're, you're absolutely entitled to have that. I, I don't know how that would work, but I think they can silence Elon Musk. Oh, and I think yeah. that, and he's just, listen, he's just the, 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 the loudest, one, of them, yeah. one of them, the loudest voice in the room. But I think, I think that this is coming to a tremendous head in 2021. I think the summer of volatility in the crypto space is just beginning. It's like the Carpenters Act. We've only just begun. That's right. Talk about building something together. Yeah. Look at you and I. I should have had some music I could have played. We're going to get this stuff figured out. We're, we're, right. we're in week two. By God. We're in week two. Yeah. And so, but look at this short. So look, on my chart, Stock Nerds Market Lovers, the, the purple line's a five exponential. The pink line's an eight. Uh, excuse me. The green line is an eight. Uh, the pink line's a 21. The blue is a 34. The red's a 50. And this is just shorting, shorting 101 here um, in regards to how you look at how you look at something that is shortable, no matter what the product is. Too close below the 21, this is not your time to buy. You can see it breaks. And we've shown you multiple examples of that, like DraftKings, Pen, Pen Gaming, whatnot. But look, you can't get above the 5, and you struggle today to get above the 8. Now you're trading below the 5. This looks like it wants to come back down here to 31,980. Wouldn't surprise me one bit if it happened over uh, this long weekend. And speaking of the long weekend, Daniel, appreciate you – and the team allowing us to taper over taping on a Wednesday. It's the, what is today, Daniel? The 26th? 26th. 26th. Yeah. I appreciate everyone allowing us to tape on a Wednesday. Uh, I'm getting out of uh, Dodge for a, a few days, and I greatly appreciate that. And so I uh, also got a sixth grade graduation. To to. <laughs> yep. 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 And yeah. so I um, appreciate that. But uh, this is, this is just starting. And so like, 
I think that $800,000 wipeout on this 40% move in just Bitcoin from high to low is just beginning because if you, the reprieve is the bounce. Like how many people can count on a 10%, 13% bounce back up to 40K and then, and then if it just goes back down, like people are on a seesaw. Mm -hmm. And then let's take into account the taxes. I mean, how many people have traded in and out of crypto and their taxes keep rolling, you know, because they're short term mm -hmm. gains and maybe the money's not there to pay the taxes on top of it. Yeah. If you have a pullback right when you owe the tax. Right. And so like, I, 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 I feel that that weight, like I'm not this is this what I'm describing is not affecting me one, one bit. But what I what I can feel though is that weight, because I, I've had, I think everyone who's been trading long enough has had uh, the huge tax bill, check, mm -hmm. you know, has been on the wrong side of the trade, check, you know, has lost money doing something on scary, liquid leverage, scary drawdown, check. check, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've I've literally lost, figured out a way with my own money to lose to lose it in copious ways as I grind it up higher, and it's like okay, let's not play with that match again, yeah. and so. I just think we're starting. And, and what's happening here is uh, crazy when you look at something I'm going to show you right now. So this is a daily chart of Bitcoin. And if I show you, um, th this is uh, Bitcoin, and we'll just go back to December here. So on the lower left-hand side of your screen where I'm drawing, Bitcoin comes down to the 21, makes this really nice move uh, into the beginning of the year. And just look at this uh, grind higher, respecting the 21 and the 34 until uh, April recently but i'm going to now juxtapose that with a chart of the nasdaq and let me just this is the nasdaq i'm gonna get rid of the marker marks the marky marks in the fun bunch zach you with me marky marks in the fun bunch yeah and yeah. so it really i mean here's here's december i went a little bit too far but here's december and you kind of you're you kind of got this chart of the nasdaq and the bitcoin they're not in sync per se you know, perfectly, with symmetry, yeah. perfectly aligned, but they're kind of doing the same thing. And the markets, the equity markets, trading with the Bitcoin market or the crypto market, I don't think is a good thing whatsoever. They th that correlation is not good for uh, equity traders, and because it's really hard right here. Here's a yes. Like you're, someone's looking at this chart, going, "What the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> this daily chart of the S and P's." Looks great. Look at the S and P's. You got an eight twenty one cross here. Excuse me, as I went a little too far there. You got an eight twenty one cross. You're looking like you're going to go test forty two thirty eight new highs. Mm -hmm. Like, what's wrong with this? And and the problem is, it's the setups underneath. Like the indices, like the S and P, look all right. But when I when I show you this Nasdaq chart now on the daily, one more time, it it's just choppy. It's just choppy. It's hard to get traction. And that makes for what that will lead to oftentimes is investor impatience or trader impatience. And so like you'll, you'll, you'll buy at the highs of a range and you'll end up selling at the lows of the range. And you really need to think of it in reverse. And I think the summer of discontent in crypto is just starting. I could be wrong. It doesn't matter if I'm, it's not about being right or wrong. It's understanding where you are situationally. Like situational awareness in the markets is like the most underrated skill. And that's why I love using average true range charts. Average true range charts allow me to see better than anything else is something overbought or oversold with, with a fact-based look because overbought and oversold are opinions mm -hmm. in many people's minds. Well, that is overbought. Nobody should be buying XYZ stock in here because XYZ stock. Uh, Alex, give me a stock at new highs, close to new highs. Give me anyone. Pick one. F FTNT. FTNT. It's time to have FTNT. <laughs> I was just seeing. Yes, Daniel. I was stalling for myself till I could pull it up. So uh, why, <laughs> should, why should Fortinet be higher? Right, and you can find a thousand reasons. Well, they fight cyber crime, Tim, and that's really big. Did you not hear about the pipeline? P A N W. How's P A N W doing? Okay, they had a decent move the other F day. F E Y E. Well, Fire Eye should be higher because it's better. Like, like that, that's subjectivity. Like subjectivity will, I believe, you know, ruin you. Like because it leads to opinion, 
and, and, and which opinion then leads to hope, and then hope leads to desperation. And before you know it, you're levered up 100 to 1, and you're in a is, corner. Is, is that Mavlov's hierarchy? Yeah, five exactly. yeah, that's exactly what I just described, except with how this works. And so when I'm looking at S&Ps here on this average true range chart, like, it, and if, you, if you're newer to the work, Stock Nards and Mark Levis, I know a, a lot of you are not. But we bring on some new people every week, and I like everybody to be on the bus together, learning together, having a good time together, singing the Fortnite song to YMCA. And oh, thank God. I thought you were going to do wheels on the bus. You know what they do, Danny. <laughs> you know what those wheels on the bus do. What do they do? They go round and round. I do shouldn't they? have brought that up. <laughs> man, Remy, Remy's got the whole arm motion. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, man. And so uh, look at this. Uh, here's November 9th. This is a uh, vaccine. Uh, Vaccine arrival day. We're coming with vaccines. And you can see it hits the third ATR. And what the ATR charts allow me to see is probabilities. And the markets, I view them as probabilistic. And when you start looking at markets in the probabilistic mindset, the whole world opens up to you because no longer are you hoping, no longer are you coming to the market with opinion. Like I wake up every day not caring. Well, I, I care what the markets do, but I don't give a rat's ass what the markets do. Like the markets are going to present information that I don't know every day. And because the markets are a forward-looking vehicle at six to eight months, it, it's really hard for you and I to decipher what the hell is going on. Like, think, like, go back to the Bitcoin chart. If, 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 uh, like, like, let me make my point. MSTR is a hot mess. MSTR. God, I think my vision's getting worse, Daniel. Okay. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> I Maybe you need glasses. Well, I was laughing. You need bigger reading glasses. <laughs> no, these are bifocals. Okay. Like, I just struggled to type in Mr. That's why I paused there. Like, I'm getting concerned. 45 has hit me a little harder than I expected. So here's Mr. Like, Mr. started selling off way before Bitcoin started selling off. And you can say Tesla is a laggard. Tesla started selling off way before Bitcoin started selling off. And these companies that have tied themselves to crypto, they were selling off long before. The crypto. The crypto, which is interesting because I think somebody always knows and that someone is always Goldman Sachs. And they, they <laughs> know what's going to happen before it happens because they're the ones dictating the, the, the next chapter of the story. Yeah, Wait, how much is Tesla up right now? Pull that chart back up. What's the intraday on that Tesla? It's chart? up right now 2.67%. It's, it's still up. I don't know if you've got a little bit of a latency delay. Okay. But another – another and who knows what the real story is, but another argument is – those particular companies that had, were holding Bitcoin went down, and so right. they sold some Bitcoin to help. Help, you know. Well, I don't think I don't better, think but... Michael Strayer from Mister is selling any Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, Michael Strayer, if I've said that properly. So look, so S and P's. When I look at the S and P chart here, look, we're at uh, we're only. I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can, don't just box this up all together. Thinkorswim man has been acting up all week, but look, you're. you're you got to the two ATR. So how you use these charts, here's the mean or the 21 exponential moving average. And you go one, two, or three of those ranges to the upside. And then one, two, or three of those average true ranges to the downside. Okay. So today, uh, uh, S&P is right now, as we're talking, are up seven and a half, right? Seven and a half points. Well, the average true range is 53. Am I excited by that? No, man, I'm not excited by that. And, but we're stalling out here three days in a row at this plus one ATR. Is, is that all this market has? Well, Tim, it's the pause that refreshes. It's going to go higher. See, I don't, I don't know that. And I know there are a bunch of charts that don't look like FTNT. And what's been happening is you've got this rolling bear market underneath the indices. And it's just rolling from one group, one sector. And we can make the case with, uh, let's do DraftKings, DK and G. So DraftKings, even though a couple, I mean, you've had a couple good days from 39.44, but you were all the way up near 75 just a couple months ago. What changed in DraftKings? This is why individual investors, I think, get incredibly frustrated. What changed in DraftKings business model to send it down almost half? Nothing. Nothing. They've expanded. It doesn't have to do with the business model, though. The business model has nothing uh, to sure. do with it. Who is that angelic voice from on high <laughs> raining down freaking information that's needed to understand the complexities of the markets? Go, Alex. Go. Alex the Greek. 
<laughs> it has to do with the earnings and sales. And no, it has to do. Oh, it has to do with the market. The no overall do. market. It fundamentals. Fundamentals. What are you talking about, <laughs> man? I just built you up like you were like the Greek god of Phoenix. <laughs> The market's a forward-looking vehicle. Exactly. And so I don't think the fundamentals are bad. I mean, they have a spending problem probably. Like they have to spend more than they're taking in uh, to attract customers. Maybe that's the issue. We could, we could pontificate what it could be. But if price is the ultimate arbiter in what is leadership, then, then I don't know how you look at this chart of Bitcoin and tell me right now this is when you should be buying. You can dollar call. I think Ethereum. I still think Ethereum actually goes to um, ten thousand. It's at twenty seven forty four right now, but Ethereum was at forty four hundred just a couple weeks ago, and that and I think that's the difference when you say, well, are you an investor or are you uh, are you a trader? And I think. I, I, if you ask me uh, privately, which I don't hold anything back on the show. So if you ask me privately, which I believe is this discussion I'm having with you right now, what's the difference between an investor and a trader? And I think an investor is someone who got caught. Because you can't tell me, like if I pull up an Amazon chart, right? And I, and I go here to the daily, and uh, I think I'm going back 20 years, and it's just going to take a second to recalibrate. And so there are moments in time that if you got in here, uh, 2015 down at $324 that you, if you had a way, if you had a system to execute upon that you would ride it from 324, at, you know, before it peaks in, at the end of 2015 at 719. And then it makes this dramatic, like 30% pullback. You would want to take your profits. There's nobody. I mean, I, I can't imagine the person out there that goes, no, I, I would enjoy sitting through a 30%, 40% correction in the stocks I have conviction in. Who is that person? That's the person that likes, that, that wants to get hemorrhoids because Preparation H is on sale. <laughs> they don't even need Preparation H. They're just like, well, come on, man. I mean, that's a really good deal on that cream. And I've seen the commercials. Get me some hemorrhoids. Nobody said. Was that good? That worked for you? It was okay. That's all right. Fuck it. It's good. It's a good analogy. Just we're doing. We're, we're, we're doing live theater, here, man. It's hard. That's true. It just. It's easier now that I can see everyone's. Well, I, I can't see the guys. I, I, I miss. I miss seeing the fellow. I can see Zach and uh, Danny's face. Like, yeah, yeah. I can tell if I'm all right here so far. And so, right now, this Bitcoin wipeage outage. I, I. I don't know if it's a buying opportunity. What are, you, what are you laughing at? I was outage. wipe and shoutage. I was, I was just thinking in my mind, is that one word or two words? Uh, oh, wipe is it. Is that a hyphenated it's word? Hyphenated for sure. Compound <laughs> sentence kind of thing. <laughs> so let me read you a stat here uh, that I got to pull back off my phone here. So 10,000 invested in Bitcoin seven years ago is worth $3.2 million right now. See, now that's the sexy number, right? Look, look at Zach. I, you guys got to have one of those stories like I got with somebody like a decade ago that was like, hey, have you heard of this Bitcoin thing? And you're like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Everybody has a story like yeah. that about this Bitcoin Every thing. time I hear an old story, every time I hear about how great it would have been there's, if you bought in seven years ago, in I get mad. So that's the, whole, uh, that's the whole attraction of Dogecoin, of right? Of course. Because you could have bought Bitcoin for pennies on the dollar. Yep. And if you were just smart enough to do nothing, yeah. literally go about your business, yep. you now are a I'm millionaire. A millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that's the, that's what is so effing sexy about investing. <sighs> and so I bring you this, this, this huge, uh, opposing picture today that, well, Tim, how do you get these massive moves? Well, you can't be afraid to get back in, but you have to have triggers, which is where I'm leading to here, Daniel. And I've got a few other things, by the way, is the housing trade dead? We're going to get to that in a moment. That is called a tease. Okay, I like so that. I saw that. Yeah, like good. when we covered teases at the, <laughs> at the broadcasting school of Connecticut above, above, the CBS, the CBS. above the CBS upstairs, <laughs> what you learn is give them a tease, give them, some, give them a reason to keep coming back. Yes. Yeah, and I think that, that bond trade and uh, the housing trade just might be the ticket here. But I digress. Now, $10,000 invested in Bitcoin one month ago is worth $5.7,000. 
Ouch. Right. And, and, and there is my, it's not my dilemma, because I know what side of the discussion I fall on. I don't think any, nobody wants to sit through that. If you knew the outcome, right, you, they wouldn't call it markets. They would call it, um, sure, they, they, call, they call it an annuity. <laughs> <laughs> that you're about to get hosed by a high-pressure salesperson. Who from but North, you don't get 40% for, gains for, for, in an annuity. No, yeah, from yeah, Northwestern like Mutual 2%. Life. Right. And so uh, nobody wants to sit through this. And so what can you do? Well, you could dollar cost average. That's one way out of it. I'm not being facetious when I say that. You can dollar cost average. And then, but you got to do it religiously. You can't pick and choose your moments of your moments of fear can't can't override your plan. Yeah, the moments of fear are probably the times you really should do it. So now let's zoom in, Danny. Are you are you taking? You can't, Danny. Can't see my screens. It's not fair. But uh, it's theater of the mind. I can visualize. That's right. <laughs> it's theater of the mind. I'm looking right at you, but I can't see your. See, I can visualize. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I, it's a, it's a, it's skill based right there. Uh, it's actually reflecting off your glasses. No shit. Sure. <laughs> 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 he, he put the hit, hook line. I would. I'd be like, oh my gosh, Danny is like Danny is like three times. Oh boy, it's true. I, it's no. that big brain. We talked about it last week. Because you're a damn genius. <laughs> so Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> he's Sherlock something. Yeah. And so. Um, that was straight of thought. You want me to help you? you no, I'm where. I'm here. Okay. So when I'm looking at this chart, do you really want to buy this chart? And, and the answer for me is no. And I, I don't know where you fall in the discussion here, but if you're dollar cost averaging, you got to buy it. Like whatever day you, if it's the 26th of May, the 26th of every month, then you're sending in $500 to crypto.com. You got to do that. But for me, uh, I, I think you got to wait for two closes above the 21 or at least a close above the 21. But the problem is this stuff moves it's so fast. It's hard. It, to it, and, and it's happening 24 seven. And what I think is twofold here, threefold one, there's people trying to trade this without some kind of rule based system. And it doesn't matter what your rules are. It's that you're following your rules could be ineffective. That's not the discussion. It's that you have something that you're following. That's point one. Point two is. Wow. Well, Point point two is like, well, what what's the what what's your end point? Like where where do you cash in? Never. Like, that's the whole thing about Bitcoin. It never mm -hmm. it, it never ends. So I think you've got fatigue. That like they're like the markets, and I, I sincerely hope they don't go. I know the futures markets are 24 hours, almost 24 hours. Like, I'm not a fan. I'm not a proponent of the 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 markets being open 24 hours yeah. yeah and i know a lot of people are it's a big discussion uh that's happening out in um big big thinking space when it comes to stocks and and, and markets. But markets are enough i i think for traders you don't you don't need it your mind needs a break your mind you, there's studies out there there's two studies that come to mind the one that, that Trading, the same effects of cocaine uh, appear in brain scans of dopamine. dopamine yeah. yeah, and the other one is that the longer you stare at the charts, the worse decision making. You know, when you start at eight thirty central or nine thirty eastern, and you end your trading day at four or uh, three uh, central or eastern, uh, your mind is not is it, you're making poor decisions as the day goes on because you're not as fresh. And I I wonder if that's what we're seeing in the crypto space right now, and I. You're, you're going to see more than 800,000 accounts wiped out. And you're going to see people having, if, they're, if they've got other equities like the Teslas or uh, the Civics or the Rides, uh, they're, they're going to have to sell the, the to good. To cover. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying those were the good with the bad. They're just going to have to sell the bad with the bad and uh, to cover. And then they're going to have to bring money. And all, the, and, and all that money that people have saved up, how much is being squandered right now with margin calls? So think about that. Like when people talk about the stimulus checks being deposited in right, right in the Robin Hood, how much of that money is just going right to somebody else? And let me make this other point really clear, and then we'll, we'll move on a little bit here. Um, uh, when I was talking about the carry trade last week, which is what a lot of professional traders are doing with crypto, meaning, um, oh, got a real live alert with uh, Hunter, uh, Zach, where he's saying there's some static coming through. We can, because this is our own podcast and we're not ad ad adhering to any kind of rules. We're not beholden anybody. Yeah, no. Look, uh, sometimes when we would spend time after class at the broadcasting school, you know, like circle around the professor. You're having coffee? 
Yeah, having down coffee, the street from just, CBS. Yeah, just yeah, just right. talking about broadcasting uh, things. It's okay to let the producer know when things are happening in real time. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So uh, thanks, Hunter. Assassin. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Hunter. <laughs> So it's only it's only been a few times. Well, I appreciate that, brother. So uh, what professional traders are doing is they're borrowing Bitcoin, and they're you know to short, and they're going along Bitcoin Cash, and they're making the split. Typically, that's the typical trade. But it doesn't matter which entity they're doing it with. What matters is that you go to BlockFi or any other brokerage that's offering this uh, this trade. And if you have crypto there, they're going to offer you a certain percentage, like 5 to 8% to lend out to people who want to short cryptocurrency. In that crypto. In that crypto. Yeah. And the reason why this exists is because normally if you wanted to do the carry trade against currencies, there's banks and other places out there that will lend them the money, these trading firms. You can't go to Bank of America and get – and, and tell them, yeah, I want to short some Bitcoin. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you float me a million? <laughs> yeah. And, and, but that's the thing. Like there's brokerages like Archaos or Ar how do you pronounce that? The guy who just blew himself up. Ar Archegos? Archegos. 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 Thank you. Archegos. Yeah. Like b b banks and brokerages will loan you money to the, to the high hilt. Just look at Archegos, which I can't pronounce. And hey, so Tim, can I interject on Bitcoin real quick? Hell yeah, interject. Um, I just I want to share some information. So they created the futures tube for that ability to short because you can't actually short that physical coin. There you go. And so that's that's the, the, the it's it's traders with a bunch of cojones and uh, in a bankroll that are so some of these uh, crypto brokerage firms, for lack of a better word, yeah. are finding out that. It's a little bit harder to have margin calls and to collect before the account blows up than a regular stock account because the cryptos move so fast. Right. And and but again, I think the story here is the lending. Yeah. That that's my point. Uh, what I really want people to understand is I don't think this is over. I don't know. I don't. I'm not talking about where where Bitcoin goes as a price. Every day the price goes higher or just trades sideways is a day of relief for somebody on margin in Bitcoin. That is my 100% absolute thought. And every day that it goes down or gets rejected from a price level like uh, the 8 exponential moving average or, or the 5 exponential moving average, that Bitcoin was up 7% when uh, Danny Don and I did our morning call. It's up 4% now as we talk. That's 3%. And in that 3%, there are, there are more people on margin getting a tap on their shoulder. And that... That, my friends, is the real story here. And I don't, I don't think that this – and the promotion. Like I, Elon Musk can talk about the virtues of, of um, his own stock, right? But let's pretend for a second that Elon Musk started, started talking about General Motors, like positively. Mm -hmm. And he was going and, – and, and he uh, – buying, but nobody knew he was accumulating shares of General Motors. And then maybe five months later, he announces the partnership with General Motors. Legal? Uh, that probably would fall under insider trade. Something, right? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah he, like yeah. skeptics. Yeah, yeah. Or, or what if he was talking up the positivity of a stock that he was shorting? You're not supposed to. Yes, if you're if you're a control person inside. I mean. Yeah, you, you can't. Number one, like for brokers and for pr big, big brokerage firms, they can't talk their book and try to manipulate the stock when they own it in house. This, but even for yeah. someone that's a publicly traded and big, big public figure, mm -hmm. they can get in issues if they're. And that's kind of like a pump and dump scheme, right? And so, so, this is coming. This day, I don't know when, but I, I, I would be surprised if it wasn't this summer. That you don't see the discontent come to this this the this. summer of discontent. I think that's what it is for crypto shaping up, especially if Gary Gensler gets involved, because that would be well, the the government's that, stepping up their rhetoric. That would be the first. But I I don't know Don or Hunter or if anyone has any thoughts on this. I don't know if Gary Gensler can have a can have a say because it's not a regulated security. 
Well, that's the whole point. They say it needs to be right. That's that's the whole. Yeah, that's the whole issue. So that's the out. Yeah, you know, just just uh, just 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 um, disclosing. You know, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't think is enough for Elon Musk, or or uh, it's a joke, or going on Saturday Night Live and making fun of it. I don't think that's enough. I, I think that it's um, coming. And then I've got some other issues too with the market here. Um, and we'll get to that bond trade here in a second. But this is a put call ratio that we're looking at right here. And it's this chart is fascinating to me because the put call ratio chart is nothing but a chart of human psychology playing out. Sentiment, yeah. It's sentiment. And uh, I am not a believer in the wisdom of the crowds per se. Like if everybody's long, you go long. If everyone's short, you go short. I believe you take the opposite approach. And when everybody is bearish, it's probably when you want to start not being so bearish. And if everybody's bullish, you probably want to be a little bit cautious. That doesn't mean 100% it works, but it's all right. Nothing works in absolution, my friends. But I can see that graphically on this chart if you know how to use it. And so uh, a couple things here. Um, the big money printing, we've talked about this ad nauseum on the show. Uh, has has changed the metrics of the put call ratio where somewhere between about 0.65 and 0.7 is the new high level mark for mm -hmm. there's a lot of people buying puts and when you, to the low end um, you're coming down below 0 0.4 maybe 3.5 and so what I'm seeing here um, is this 10 day moving average pointing lower and what that tells me is that there's a ton of call buyers doesn't mean they're wrong i mean markets are just a stone's throw away you know when i'm saying markets s and p's s and p's are just like a skip and a jump from new highs it's not an act of congress to get them to go to new highs here matter of fact they probably do it just to throw everybody off balance but this 10-day moving average heading lower has led to some pretty big sell-offs when it when it's been pointing straight down and you can see like this is the march sell off here and the 10 day moving average was just heading down and you can see eventually price that's the s&p's in the bottom of my chart here price just starts heading lower and that's because you, the old adage well who's left to buy and the put call ratio chart can give you that and right now we're sitting at 0.46 um where we've got the 10 day average now kind of kind of indicating uh pretty good strong bullishness right and so that 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 has me wondering that when i look at when i take it back to say uh the s and p's when i look at the s p futures here on this daily uh this daily chart here and we'll go to the hr chart to to make it is is this all it's got you know is this is this one plus atr right now all the market has left for this phase and which then got me thinking daniel what what causes selling and when you look at the question of what causes selling, well, of course, bad news, right? right. You have massive sell-offs on unplanned events. And the market doesn't know not much. The market doesn't know um, the, what I'm trying to say. The here. market knows most information. The market. I would say the market knows 95% of everything. And so like your big sell-offs on unexpected Attacks like the terrorist attacks. Black Swan, yeah. Yeah, those, those types of things, of course, uh, don't happen that often, and the market's not prepared for them. The market got extremely volatile when uh, Trump would say something uh, about China and sanctions one day and then reverse course the next day. Mm -hmm. The market really didn't know, and hence that extreme period in 2016, 2017, of all that uh, volatility. Right now, um, you know, what is what does the market know? You know, like there's... There's not much here that the market doesn't doesn't really know, and so I I wonder if this is all it has. I wonder if it, you know, why aren't we going up? Like, what's going to be the impetus to drive these markets to new highs? And that's kind of a fruitless question. But I can see here that every time we get to an average true range line on this chart, I don't know how well they can see them, Zach, because I'm not zoomed in. But there's plus ones where we're at right there. There's two. There's three. We're kind of pausing here at plus one, but. We really haven't gotten too far beyond plus one in a while. And um, the thing that causes selling isn't news per se. It's a lack of buyers. And that that's you're seeing a lack of buyers. They, 
if the market is 90% algorithm, I don't know what percentage it is, but it's mostly algorithmic trading, right? The average trade lasts about eight seconds. Mm -hmm. So if the market's mostly algorithmic trading, not you and I, or the individual stock nerds and market lovers out there, then what makes price stop at certain levels, just like it makes price go up at certain levels? Well, on the downside, it's the absence of buyers. You don't need news. Like, Hunter, let's go back to DraftKings a second. I, I only engage DraftKings. We actually mentioned it before the show, just talking. And Hunter uh, is wicked smart in this entire space, and I, and I enjoy listening to him talk about it. But DraftKings didn't have any news, did they? No. No. No, this is – I mean, you want to you wanna talk about – pull up space. Pull up SPCE. They've gone up 80% in the last six days. Mm -hmm. um, DraftKings gone up 10, 20% in the last six days. So, and I mentioned it in the video, you've seen TLT go up, up for the better part of the last five or six days as well. And a lot of those speculative names have had relatively strong moves, but many are still really depressed below declining moving averages. There's a select few that are above their moving averages, but what? Um, and what causes this, I'm sorry, what causes this decline? Maybe it was the delay of the rocket launch. You could point back to that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The news doesn't matter if buyers show up. I want you to remember that. The news doesn't matter, typically. Remember, there's no absolution. So somebody who wants to nail me to a crossbar, you said the news. No, no, no. It just look. There's no absolution in pretty much in life, but let alone in markets. It's a lack of buyers. Why do you think now? I, I'm a fan of the meme stocks. I'm not going to hide it. Pat Toomey, our favorite senator, right? Who's made a ton of money. In, <laughs> Pat Toomey uh, has made a ton of money. God, that, can we just let, if you're in Congress, you shouldn't be allowed to trade. You can, you can be allowed to have, uh, uh, I, think, I think there should be some congressional uh, account that's managed by some firm and all you've got like a blind trust, yeah, yeah like it, and all you got are index funds and that's it like you well tell I mean, that's that's how they make so much money yeah hey if there's jobs you got a drug test to work there then there should be jobs where you can't you know can't can't trade all right do that's you the job hold on there's yeah. no drug test to become a congressman or no no, no he's, oh, talking about another, oh. he's talking about the real world tim oh, right. the real world <laughs> not can, congress congress I, is not the real world they can insider trade they can right. do whatever if it, we pay to have their defense for uh, uh sex uh if the guy, crimes i mean come on if the guy sacking groceries is limited in what he can do hold in on, his Danny, free time Danny, by god congress. Danny just said sex crimes and you just went with sacking that's, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> sack groceries that's right that's yeah. awesome here's how i'm gonna bring don into the show. Watch how I work Don in the show. I haven't heard Don's voice and I, and I miss it. He's coming in hot. Hear me? I, no, no. I, I can hear you just Definitely fine. Here's, you. Here, here, here's how I'm going to bring Don into the show. Don, out of all the Congress people and senators that, that parade oh around God. our great country, here it comes. which one of them do you think fails a drug test? Because since there's no drug test to become a congressperson, which one, right off the top of your head, doesn't pass the drug test? Eric I bet you Don had... Who? Eric Swalwell is what he said. Who's that? The one that was dating the Chinese spy for five, ten years. The what? Eric Swalwell. The There's not a rule against dating spies and becoming a congressperson. Well, she was a hot Chinese spy. She was like 24, and you know, so you know. <laughs> he, <laughs> Tim, you don't know that he was who, on the intelligence you? committee. Who are you expecting <laughs> me to say, Tim? That's really the question. I don't. I, <laughs> Can, can we just pause the whole show for one second? I was being sarcastic. She, she, he, they didn't do anything to him. They should have kicked him off the intelligence because committee. Because she was a, uh, a an attractive spy made the difference for you? No, no, I was yes. being sarcastic. I'm oh, saying, that, that was yeah, oh, that was sarcastic. That, that, okay. hey, keep up to the level of intelligence. I'm, I'm, I'm he's he's the, also the excuse. guy that farted on live TV. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's go to stocks. Like Hold on, go to markets. Hold on. Go to markets. See, and that's how I worked on into the show. Perfect. Yeah, that, that actually worked out well. By the way, Jim Tom Sula. I'm, I'm afraid to hear Former this. head coach Tom of the San Francisco. Oh, look up Jim Tom Sula. Jim Tom Sula looks like 
He looks like the, the like if Trash Heap from Fraggle Rock came to life as a human being, I'm almost certain Jim Tom Sula looks like it. It's like, a like mustache. Trash Heap right. from Fraggle Rock. I yes. don't even know it. what that means. No. Jim Tom Sula, like if I said offensive lineman, Jim Tom Sula pops up in your head. Like as that the line? Guy. Okay. Jim Tom Sula. Is it 49ers guy? He was, Well, he was the old 49ers. He farted right. during a press conference. I believe it. No, he looks like he he looks like a guy that would absolutely break wind in a press conference and then deny it. He's the kind of guy who passed gas in an elevator full of people. You know what? For, as a as a treat for stock nerds and market lovers, pause the video, Google Tim's Jim Tom Sula farts during press conference, and you also, will have Eric Swalwell farts on live TV. You should yeah. also Google that. <laughs> Both are entertain equally entertaining, I'm sure. I'm going to get such a talking to from Danny about letting Don let's, talk on the let's, show. Let's go, sure. the let's go to the stock. Let's stocks. go to the yeah. stock. Let's talk numbers. Well, so first here of we all, go. I have several uh, pop culture corrections to make. It's uh -oh. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Not oh, the oh, oh, yeah. oh, big Don. Four minutes. Bring it, Don. Bring it. You know Coming what? Don end. is now the show ombudsman. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And Tim, I'm surprised Tim you even know what created, that word means, Tim. What was that? created a human being by combining... Michael Strahan and Michael Saylor. And <laughs> I was wondering. I thought it sounded a whole lot like Michael Strahan, by God. I knew it. So Michael like Saylor is the, is the CEO of MSTR. I like Don's new role as the show on Buzz. Yeah, yeah, Clean yeah. this thing up halfway through. This is good. Yeah, keep going. Thanks, Don. Is that it? Uh, yeah, but you are correct about Gary Gensler being translucent. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very much so. Hot okay. takes. So, uh, look, if, if you don't believe Watch this, Daniel. How I bring it back to what causes selling. Can I get a Can I get a high five high for five, that? There you go. High five. Thank you. High five. So, if you don't think like an absence of buyers causes, you know, doesn't 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 allow a stock price to fall, just look at these last uh, couple months here of GameStop. Yeah, it went to four eighty three, and people got margined out. People got stopped out. The big question you have to ask is, are there more buyers than sellers, yeah. or are there more sellers than buyers? Which, which Question number one on any stock. Yeah, and so right now, uh, and, and, and that sounds, see, I, I know what Danny was trying to do there, and I'm, when people say that, well, hey, why did the stock price go down? And then some guy uh, flippantly will say, because there were more sellers than buyers there, guy. Like, that's not what Danny was doing. But so many, uh, that's why I hate finance Twitter. Yeah. I like me Twitter. You want to measure selling pressure and buying strength. Yeah, and, and the way to do that factually, this is now this is because this this segment right here is become gold. Mm -hmm. Because now you can factually do that, stock nerds and market lovers. When you look at this chart, when Danny says there's more sellers than there are buyers, get two closes below the 21. Shift in trend. Mm -hmm. More sellers than buyers. The only way that happens And that is a volume. Selling volume, and you're like, well, Tim, that happened over here. Yeah, you. If you were buying big, if if you're not the dollar cost averager, you're not the long term holder. Then, then this isn't where you buy, you know. And and if and if you're trading it, this is too close below twenty one. Is kind of where you get out, and and that's how you measure exactly what Danny just said. More sellers and buyers. Price falls in the absence of buyers more than price falls. Because of news. Uh, yes. And that's that's the point I want to make there. You want to talk about bonds? I do. Let's do I want to talk about the bond trade. Hunter mentioned it. Hunter, I, I want to talk about uh, that Mark from Buffalo is right. You are the bearish person and the most bearish person in America. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, a Mark from Buffalo reference. I'm all for that. I love Mark from Buffalo. By the way, Mark from Buffalo's I, got a posse too. Does he really? Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got friends. I can't be saying that the market's going down when 10 out of the 11 S&P sectors are above their 21-day moving average. Until, until that breaks, I, I, the, the market's fine. I don't, I don't think the market's going into some big overblown. I, I'm not. I think the market's topping. I, I, I think the market can go hit new highs here. I mean, that comes out well, you just said You just said you think the market's topping and the market can go to new highs. So. Yeah, I don't think those those are mutually exclusive statements. Let me explain. Market can go up here. I think you're working on a on a head and shoulders top here in in markets, and I think that come the third quarter. But but what well, the charts will dictate. Yeah, the chart, matter, yeah, because here's here's the one thing. So you, you said earlier you're not you, you're not sure what could be the impetus to drive uh, stocks higher. 
what, number one, we may not know what the impetus is. Number two, it could be $2 trillion of stimulus <laughs> they decide to pass. It, it, it if $2 trillion yeah. dollars comes through, then news would drive that market. But the, the, the point I guess I'm trying to, I, I should really state here, yeah. as the, is, is what's obvious in my mind but might, might not be coming out of my mouth, is yeah. that price dictates right. what you do. Right. Like just, just because I think there's a topping process that's taking place here doesn't, doesn't mean you can't go hit new highs. And how well, right you, now the markets are strengthening because the Nasdaq's gotten above its twenty-one and fifty. Keep talking, it's reclaimed baby. It. It, it, they've, <laughs> they've reclaimed it. They, 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 the, the weakest average, the weakest is still the Russell, but yeah. the Nasdaq has now joined the down the Nasdaq, and things are actually starting to strengthen. Now let's just see how long that lasts. Let's and that's everything. been the but that's been the problem with 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 markets that the, this choppiness is just rolling. You know the the indices yeah. look fine and the yeah. sectors look fine. And it's underneath the hood, you've got rolling well, sectors, changing yeah, sectors. Absolutely. And so TLT trade. So uh, which Hunter started to allude to it. I should have went to it a little bit sooner. But let me pull up some housing. So here's the thing about uh, the housing market. So housing market had some tough, a tough couple of weeks, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. let's look at ITB, which is more of the construction uh, ETF. It's poking above the 21 today, up 0.67%. Uh, but look, 78 to 71. These aren't big moves. But the charts are interesting here. It's XHB, uh, which has more retail in it, like uh, Home Depot, right? And Lowe's. These things have been on tremendous runs. I think these stocks are just gathering their, 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 they're gathering themselves from tremendous moves. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if for now, the housing trade is dead. Like when you look at this chart of Lowe's, Home Depot, um, and let's put up LBS, let's put up some lumber. Here's lumber. Lumber's coming. Lumber's finally starting to come off now, like in, in a nice, nicer way than it was even a couple of weeks ago when it just lumber's drop. Oh, that should be bullish yeah, well, right, for right. housing, right? But that, but that is, uh, I'm going to tie this now to inflation. I think that's what you're seeing. Like when I look at uh, ZN's a little tough because a new contract came out, so you got this gap down. So we'll, we're going to look at it through the lens of TLT. So Hunter talked about TLT, and you can see big. As my chart auto centers on the wrong time frame. Let me just get my chart set. There we go. You get this big down move in bonds. Danny, I'm messing up the charts. Big down move in bonds. There you go. Thank you. Big down move in bonds. And now you've done what? I'll zoom in. You've come to closes above the 21. You've got your trigger event here. So there's the pink line, the 21, right? Um, and you've got your trigger event here, 8 through the 21, 5 through 20, whatever your trigger is. I've come to the conclusion that you cannot bite the Fed. And the Fed, the Fed is just going to let this economy run. They're going to, the Fed will find a way to keep interest rates, to keep the ZN or the ZB, 30-year uh, 30 30 year treasuries, will we'll keep them low. It's going to drop the price on those products. It'll keep those products, whatever it has to do, and it's going to let this economy run hot. And inflation is going to get worse than it is right now. Even though you see prices coming off a little bit with uh, copper, with um, in the shorter term, yeah, in the short term. But I think the trade is probably bonds here to the long side. And if you look at TLT, um, which yeah. is also good for stocks, yeah. And and to Don to Don's point uh, that you know bonds going higher is great. Uh, price of bonds. It price price of bonds. Out. Let me say that. Yeah, price of bonds. The trade here is probably bonds. You clear this level right in here. Like I, you clear this level right here about one. We'll just call it one forty. The move, the move is probably eventually, eventually. It's not going to happen in one straight shot. It's probably up to one fifty, somewhere in that zone. It's a zone, folks. It's not. It's not a. It's not an exact science here, but I don't think the Fed is going to. It would take some extrogenous event to get to to get um, to to get interest rates to do the exact opposite of what the Fed wants. I, I just I because if that happens, it, this whole mar the whole market's in peril. Then right? Mm -hmm. How do you spell extrogenous? Oh, that's a Googler. That's a Googler. Donald. No, I haven't found anything yet. That's a Googler. I found a sure. T R A G E N O U S. There you go. So it's told you word. about a big. Oh, but I hope that was right, Don. I built you up. But what's interesting? <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you one. Uh, one last thing here. Um, I'll give you one last thing here. What's interesting is before we go to the uh, fellas, 
is gold. What, what gold would, you know, gold could be signaling a bunch of things. I don't want to read into it too much, you know, gold fights inflation or whatnot. Mm -hmm. This trade started, they started talking about this trade back in April. When, it, when you, what, got too close above the 21, these are gold futures you're looking at here. Um, and you had a trigger event like the 5 through the 8 or the 8 through the 21. But I think this gold trade is super interesting where I think 1920, and if it gets through 1920, I think 1950 is your, your target here. And maybe if inflation, if it's really thought that uh, j pal j -Pow, is going to uh, let this economy really run hot, then I think, you know, who knows where gold's going. Mm -hmm. But uh, gold has been like for this for this period of like two. When I say period, I'm talking like eight weeks here. It's really been gold. Like it's been mm -hmm. it's been a couple a couple stocks, and 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 it's been and it's been uh, like a commodity here. I've I've helped facilitate some clients actually get physical precious metal, gold and silver. Yeah, and I, I'm not looking at gold as a bearish trade. Like it's a fear trade. I'm just saying that I. I this move in gold, I don't know if you take out these January levels of 1955. That there's, there's maybe, I mean, uh, but 1920 is where I thought this was headed. Uh, you're just a stone's throw away from that right now in 1905. Um, but what's interesting is, and I'll share this. I was going to do this for my one last thing, mm -hmm. but uh, I'll do it right now, and then we'll, we'll move on. For me, when I'm looking at trades that I think are setting up, and I want to know what's under the hood, I, I, my, my default is get off the daily, start looking at the smaller time frames, and I start with like a 195 minute chart or a four hour chart, and uh, which are pretty much the same thing. 195 minutes just breaks up the day into two bars, which it's really easy for me to see patterns in that regard. <laughs> Hello, who was that? I, I'm, that's that, Don that's laughing me at because you. <laughs> that's me realizing that Tim combined two words to come up with extrogenous. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it wasn't a word. There's no way. He combined extraneous and exogenous. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. This is the best show ever. Yeah. So <laughs> wait a minute. See, because I can't see Don working, and like I can't see Don. Don, was your head down the whole time looking at this? <laughs> no. He was trying to figure no, it out. But <laughs> that's. I, <laughs> So that, that's like my daughter came up with ignore and annoy. She goes, don't annoy me. Uh, what did she say? Uh, ignore? Uh, uh, I'll have to think of it. But sure. She combines those two and it's hysterical. That's why this show works. That's why, that's why it works. That's exactly why this show works. I it like I, I'm like, what's so funny about the four-hour charts? And then I'm wanting to hear and then he's back like five minutes Just cackling on the mic. Yeah, that's Don't awesome. annoy me, Dad. Yes, don't yes. annoy me. Ignore me? Uh, annoy me. Ignore me. Igno annoy and ignore. I want to. That's a good word. <laughs> I like that. So when I'm looking at for uh, when I'm looking at bullish charts uh, that I'm thinking about taking action, in, I default to the four hour or the 195, and I want to see um, I want to see consolidations. That uh, granted, on the on the daily chart, like there might be other moving averages above it. I, I'm not so concerned. I want to see consolidations that I can that I that I can figure out. Okay, where where is this move going? And even even back here, this is like several weeks ago. On this four-hour chart, you can see that this is pretty much just all one big consolidation. Then it consolidates, heads a little bit lower. That's on the daily chart. That's no big deal. But you can pick out these moments in time as I'm. And now you broke out from this one. And gold, gold just it. it it's easier for me to see these in, in the in a space like gold, or even in the commodities or the asset classes. I guess if you say bonds. Than it is in stocks. Like, look at this chart of Amazon. We'll just show you an Amazon chart on the four hour. Or pick any stock. Give me any stock, Danny. Pick one stock. Apple. Okay. Sure. That doesn't look like the gold chart. Like, like it, on a four hour time frame, it's really hard to distinguish where where to take where restoration it, hardware. All right. Sure. Let's look at RH. So yeah, like that that chart actually looks like the gold chart uh, up to this point. That's why I picked it. Part. So <laughs> just dunking on you on the show. I did, I did. He let him so, do this to you too. He, he's so cool. It's, it's, well, it's showing straight, strengthening up. Here's the thing about about Danny. He's going to get hit by lightning, and it's, got, <laughs> and, and it's coming straight from Jesus. Uh, uh, as far from as the high. housing trade, whether whether or not that's going to be over, that chart of RH that you brought up, if you break last week's lows, and if DHI breaks last week's lows, you're going to see those ETFs that you referenced, ITB and XHB break last week's lows and you'll yeah. see Toll Brothers, which is breaking out today on very good earnings with volume. Yep. That'd be a failed breakout. Those those would be the clues that the housing trade is over. 
Yeah, and and who knows if it is. I, I what what got me thinking about is the housing trade over. If you want to know how how the brain works here, Daniel, just pull back the cover a little bit. So my favorite television show was CBS Sunday Morning. It's been, been that way for years. Your favorite television show? Favorite television show. I thought it was Fraggle Jeez. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love CBS Sunday Morning. So uh, this weekend it was the home edition where they're talking about homes and housing or issues facing. And now into the mainstream has become the shortages, like a brick of cement, mm -hmm. uh, like all the shortage of labor. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's hit the mainstream. And when they're talking about uh, the housing shortage and how much – needs to be bought it just in my mind it's a cynical view and i look at the market cynically like i'm not an optimist when it comes to the market clearly by if, if don goes you are the most bearish yeah i i think optimism kills your market. in fact i i i i think you should have no emotion coming to it like it doesn't matter if i'm i don't look at it as me being right or wrong i'm just looking th through my lens and it doesn't mean it make it right what i what i perceive to be happening and is the opportunity more uh, a focused trading gold or that or trying to force Apple, you know, like, like a football through a ketchup bottle. You know, I'd rather find where the wind is at my back, per se, not trying to force the uh, football through a ketchup bottle is not a good analogy. Mm -hmm. No, I can tell by the look on your face. Football through a ketchup bottle. I was trying to visualize heard that. that one before. I don't uh, think that's in anyone's parlance whatsoever. Golf ball Again, combining garden. two things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're talking about uh, the how, like how all the people from California are moving to Idaho. And they're pricing out all the locals. The problem is that's two months old news. Well, that, that's I'm just making CBS now. Well, that's 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 my point. So now the person and we're we are the the stock nerd and the market lover, and in us as a group, the way we look at markets on a on a continuous basis are, are the, not the majority. The the minority is watching the local, the, you know, the local CBS news. news. Yeah, 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 or or, or, or not, yeah. yeah, but that's. The point is that whatever news source they're looking at right now is just It's now. already priced in, yes. Right. And so when you look at like an ITV, an XHB, um, a Lowe's or a Home Depot, they're going out after the move has happened mm -hmm. and probably mm -hmm. buying that. And that, that's my point. Right. And that I, I wonder if that's the cynical sign of, for now, a little bit of a topping process in, in that area. And now we're back to the... Game stops at AMC, and then and then just by the time uh, by the time that that train that that train ends a little bit, uh, it'll be back to housing. You know, like it's just paying attention to what to to what's what's driving price. And speaking of what's driving price, Hunter, what's driving price? Give me some give me some stocks that you're studying. So you actually uh, you stole my my mojo there a little bit. The uh, and I've got I've got a theory that I want to lay out to you guys for, for discussion. It's kind of in combination with this trade here. Um, but I think, I think gold and silver and then SIL and GDX, which are gold and silver mining ETFs are maybe the most interesting trade uh, out there right now. And Tim, will you just go ahead and pull up SIL for me? Um, sure. And what I want you to do. Yeah. I want you to, I want you to pull it back to a weekly. In full disclosure, we own that. Yes, we do. And so what's interesting here is there's been some volume over the last week or two. It's gotten above some key moving averages, and it's kind of just been going sideways for the better part of the last six or seven days, which is completely normal. Uh, but what I think is interesting on SIL, and we're going to look at a chart of GLD right after this, is – if you go all the way back to 2016, which that's what I'm looking at on my chart. Oh, let me pull it back. I'm um, so sorry. Let me get you there. There you go. I'll zoom in for you. Thanks, man. Yeah. So you 8 12, 2016, roughly August, right? You've got a high of right around 54. And then you go all the way to September of 2020, you've got a high of right around 53, 54. And then for the better part of the last nine months, we've been basing. And now here we are hooking up on the right side um, and approaching possibly those 54 levels uh, to break out to new recent highs within the last five years or so on SIL. And then if you'll do the same thing with me uh, for gold as well, it's not, it's not identical by any means, but you've got the highs of GLD back in 2011, August 2011, right around 185 roughly. 
And then for four years, we do nothing. We come all the way back up in September, August of last year and actually push past I, level I am by sorry. a little bit. I, I did gold What's futures. Up? I apologize. I had gold okay. futures That's up okay. there. I was like, gosh, that doesn't, doesn't seem like the gold, the GLD chart. Let me get that for you pro properly sized. So sorry. Now you got it. You're good, man. So my point is, is just that there is, and this is where the theory comes into play here. So you've got, you've got GLD and GDX starting to come up the right side of their bases. And uh, there's just, there's a lot of interesting factors here, but Tim, would, would you say 2020 was maybe the year of Tesla, the year, you know, Neo went up almost 2000%, mm -hmm. Tesla went up 800%, GM, Ford, they're all saying they're going to go to electric vehicles. And that school of thought left <laughs> oil and gas is dead. And lo and behold, oil and gas goes on a phenomenal run from the beginning of November all the way through the end of February. Mm -hmm. And I think we're in a similar scenario now with the cryptocurrency paradigm and gold and silver being the oil and gas in this scenario of it's, you know, it's old, it's a physical commodity, it's dead, blah, 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 blah. I just, it would not surprise me to see these physical commodities, gold and silver, what have you, go on a strong rally in the face of all of that negative I, commentary. Just, you know, do you understand my point there? I, I do. And I, I think I can, I think I do. Uh, and I can expound on it just a little bit more. Um, so we talked about inflation, okay? But what the on average, what uh, the the G seven type countries, what they've been doing is uh, printing money to the tune of about 50, expanding uh, their monetary supply by about fifteen percent a year. So that's uh, you didn't read it, Danny? No, uh, it's probably higher than that. But go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I I, I saw fifteen percent. And so um, now that's a couple, maybe a month or two old, but 15%. Mm -hmm. That's less buying power. Every time somebody prints one less, I mean, one more of something, that's more supply into the market. Mm -hmm. And with gold, well, there's only so much of it. Exactly. And with real estate, there's only so much of it. And with Bitcoin, there's only so much of it. With uh, rookie sports cards of old, there's only so much of them. You're seeing this huge uh, shift, I mean, just mammoth shift into assets, not currency, and uh, because it's it's been devalued. Well, to your point, how are they going to keep interest rates low? They're going to buy, they're going to print money, buy bonds, and monetize the bond market. Yeah, and, and so, like, um, if you look at DXY, um, the dollar here is a weekly chart. I guess the weekly chart is where you really want to be. The dollar uh, back in 08, hit 70, like in, in, in the teeth of the financial crisis, about $71, just a little under $71. You're at 90 right now. Do I think we're going to those type of lows? You got to take out 88. You take out 88, your next stop is to 2014 levels of the dollar down to 79. That's just less, less and less buying power for people being paid in dollars. Right. And so um, without a huge move in wages, wages are not keeping up with inflation. That's, that's the thing. Wages aren't keeping up with inflation. And you, there, what, what do you do to overcome that? Well, well that's true. But also to the, for, forget about the logic and the economics. Right. One thing that Hunter's also pointing out is, look, a, a lot of times these stories get overblown and like the – 3D printing, and then the pot stocks, and now the cryptos, and well, and, and last year it was all the electric cars, and now the oil and gas is coming back into vogue. Now, maybe the cryptos got overplayed a little bit, and now you're going to go back to the real precious metals and physical, even though it's not obvious. You just don't think about it. So you got to keep your mind supple enough to to accept any, like you go back to its price. Yeah, It's, I, it's all price. And, and for me, it's the chart. <laughs> the chart kind of gives, like I don't come to the market Right. Man, it's, it, I can see why people would say, Tim, you're full of uh, uh, hooey because uh, you liked hooey? Hooey, that was a good one. Uh, good one. Yeah, um, because like I, I, I'm about to say, I, don't, I come to the market without an opinion. I let the chart inform me of what my opinion might want to be. Mm -hmm. And um, that, you know, Don's like, no, S&Ps are, you know, they're just like still sort of high. Well, they years. are setting up more bullishly right now. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. And, and, and I, 
but the chop, I, I, I think, that by no means does it mean I'm right. Uh, I think that you're you're setting up for more chop, vicious, more vicious. You, you chop. might be, but you may miss out if you're not if you're afraid to get back in. You got to follow. The oh, chart. Who, yeah, but yeah. but I I don't disclose my positions. Like I, I'm not saying that I I'm not short the market. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Like I think the market's ready for a pullback. And I'm telling you, I'm not short the market. Yeah. So let me let me. That's a better yeah, way to state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and I look at this book. I just know. I I don't think history has changed. You know, I've got a precedent. Yeah. Now precedents can be broken, but I, but the things that I outlined at the top of the show are they're they're precedent, and, and so I I tend to go with that. Doesn't mean I'm right, and I don't really care. I mean, if I'm right, or, I, it doesn't. There's matter. too there's too many times that making money is pretty easy. Right this now, isn't one of them. No, no, no. I was about to say, yeah. and this is a tougher. Time. Maybe that's the way to phrase it. Yeah. This, this is not August of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. The hell, this isn't. Let me show you. Uh, well, let's keep going through I'm the more. Let's, let's go back to Hunter. We, we're, 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 well, I think that was his thing. <laughs> oh, are you going, Hunter? A little, I got a little more for you. You got a little more? more? Go ahead. Give it to me. Yeah, I do. All right. So, Don mentioned this on a video. I'm just real brief to, uh, in the gold space, NEM, Newmont. Oh. Uh, they're just consolidating at uh, highs here, right around the 72, 73 level. I'm pulling up the chart now. But they had a they had a big move out along with gold. Uh, they had earnings, I believe, end of April, April 29th, it looks like. And they're just sitting right here at this level. I just think that's I think that's an interesting chart within the gold space. I mentioned GDX, SIL, SLB, GLD. Those are your four mm -hmm. most commonly known in the space. NEM is one uh, as well. STLD and Nucor, Tim, I've been talking about them for quite some time. Um, you're starting to see, just like you have with copper, just like you have with lumber, these these names have pulled back uh, to their 21-day moving averages. And I, I only talk about Nucor and STLD primarily because they're the best, they're the strongest, and they're the healthiest um, in the steel space. And so you've got STLD just sitting right on the 21. You've got Nucor still a little bit more extended. Uh, but the caveat here, and I think STLD is attractive, However, these stocks do have a tendency to consolidate for a while on the 21, but you never know. They might bounce right off of it and keep going. Uh, but I do think Nucor is the for sure leader in the space. They've outperformed STLD by about 30% uh, year to date. And I think they've outperformed the other steel stocks by about 50 to 60% year to date. So just keep an eye on that sector. I know I've, I've talked about it a lot. It's becoming actionable as they pull back to the 21. And I think it's worth monitoring uh, as to whether or not that inflationary type of space, the FCXs, the mosaics, the steel, the lumber, can they get something going again? Uh, or are we going to continue to see growth in technology maintain momentum? Speaking of, I've got, I've got two names for you, Tim, that I want to look at in that space. Mm -hmm. Will you pull up NET for me? And that's enter. cloud. Yep. And the reason I want to mention these two is because there's still a lot out there. And granted, today and over the last few days, we're seeing some more. But net is actually above the 21, above the 50, above the 100 day and above the 200 day. There's a lot of these broken growth names that have had a decent move over the last week or two that are still below the 200 or below several key moving averages. And so I've, I've been trying to go through and find what is actually cleared those uh, and maybe possibly showing some signs of, of strength within those group. And the other name is, is S E Tim looks relatively similar to, uh, to Cloudflare, just back above the moving averages. Now it's kind of consolidated after a really strong move. It's been down slightly the last two days, just two names in that space to watch. And then my last thing here, I also touched on this in my video, American airlines, uh, AAL and CCL. This travel group uh, has been catching a bid as of the last couple of days. They had a kind of an ugly finish to yesterday, which the markets did as well. But what I think is really interesting here, and I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it on the ATR chart, but the base that we have been seeing the cruise lines and the airlines put in for the last three months or so is strikingly similar to the base that they put in uh, from about end of November to middle of February before they broke out. And I say that to say, I'm, I'm looking at CCL right now, uh, 
Let me go to let me go to AAL. So I'm right there with you. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I just changed it, and okay. I didn't have to move my marker marks. <laughs> so this is this is my last point yeah. here. It is it is similar, right? So yeah. going back to the high on December eighth ish, right, right around a little over twenty four. You then see Carnival just consolidate for a long time, right on the 21, right on the 50. And then they come down and they test the 100 day uh, right around the end of January as we had some political uh, scares going on with the White House, all that stuff. And then they they viciously come back up to the 50 day and they get back above it, consolidate for a few days. And then volume comes in and they move up and out and they go basically from about $20 up to 28 in a matter of about five days. And then recently, when you go to now, we came down, we tested the 100 day on May 12th, May 13th, came roaring back up, got back above the 50 day and the 21, took a little bit of a rest for three days. And now we're starting to move up and out uh, on the cruise lines and the airlines with a little bit of volume the last few days. So just it's an area that that I think is uh, possibly setting up and maybe getting ready, you know, maybe Carnival can get through the 30, 50, 31 level and get through those highs, as well as American Airlines can possibly get through 26. But as an, an area, I thought the volume coming in and the similarity of the two bases over the last six months was very intriguing. Tell you what, um, I, there's a ton of anecdotal. Pe- Any, has anyone booked travel recently? I did just a couple days ago. Yeah, I did. Me and I did. Have been on a, we booked a cruise. Yeah. Like I booked five uh, months ago in October. We're flying out to uh, Pensacola, and then uh, this summer we're flying back to Pennsylvania. Those, those flights are, I think, more expensive than uh, than they were back in oh, 2019. Oh yeah, yeah, and rental cars are. Expensive. Oh, you can't. You, it's really hard to get a rental car. Like that's the, mm-hmm. because of the they sold off their fleet. So yeah. you know, like how could they? How could they know, right? So I uh, one of the shows I do, I do a podcast with the guys who do car dealership mergers and acquisitions. They've been talking about it for weeks. They're like rental cars are brutal right yeah. now. Enterprise hurts. All those guys are hurting because they sold a bunch of cars to the pandemic. Yeah, we have a rental car for Pensacola, and yeah. it's like I'm going to call just to verify because yeah. we need we need you probably should yeah because we need a uh, like a car seat for uh, oh. Nora. No, rent the Remster. No. Uh, God, I think we're taking Nora's car seat. I hope we're not taking Remy's car seat. That thing because it's, there's a backpack that it comes in. I think it weighs like 50 pounds, dude. <laughs> it's good exercise. People pay for a gym membership. You can be hauling that thing around. Haul, that, haul, that, haul, haul baby gear around. That's right. All right. Was that it, Hunter? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all I got. That's yeah. uh, that's. I like. Is there last, a travel ETF? Comment. I'm sorry. Is there? Uh, well, hold other than other than uh, other than the the, the airline one. jet, there's a jet. Yeah, jet. Uh, yeah, I'm just. I'm no, it's not jet. Jets is the jets the jets. best jets. one jets. I can think of. Yeah, and it's not. And it doesn't have cruise lines or. Exp- well, it actually, it may have like Expedia and some of those travel flight booking names in it. I don't know though. Let me check real quick. You know, it's interesting. Like, you, I mean, this these charts, uh, Booking dot com, EXPE, <sighs> Expedia. I mean, I don't know if they're my they don't favorite look charts. Terrible. No, they don't look terrible. But that's the thing. Like, but they don't strike. They don't stand out at you going whole. Oh. Like when you look at a chart, to me, if you have to look at it more than like three or four seconds, it's probably not that great. Like I don't keep keep scanning. Yeah, like and, and that's the Expedient booking kind of do that to me. It doesn't mean they can't go up a couple points from here, but they're not. I don't know if they're runners like they were back in January. Like like Expedia broke out uh, two sixteen ish little consolidation went on a really nice run from one fifty to one eighty eight, like something like that. Which is correspondent with exactly when growth stocks uh, started falling apart there, right around two sixteen. Interesting. Which is interesting. Yeah. That is that is that right there, what you just said is a really interesting observation. Good dismount. Good dismount. Alex, Alex, Alex. Where are you from Mount Phoenix? <laughs> What's up? Hey, I, got <laughs> I literally uh, thought we had lost Alex. And Go brought ahead. up was RH. <clears throat> we bought this in-house yesterday. It came off the 50-day moving average. And we were we've been watching this name for over a month now because it was it's been a leading name, but we don't want to buy extended. We don't want to keep our risk low. So after it bounced off the 50 day moving average and started to creep up on that 21 EMA right there, that pink line, Mm -hmm. we took a position on that. Um, Looks good. Well, you know, Don can talk about, you know, how we'll measure that risk and where we would potentially if we have to get stopped out, which we don't plan on. I think it's probably going to go higher. Um, the other stock I want to go over 
is Roblox. I think that this stock could potentially become a true market leader. Uh, I, I bought this in the beta test portfolio that I'm managing. I used the pivot, which is around that 79 area, but I got in at 75 a little bit earlier um, in last week. And that thing has screamed up with some serious volume. Uh, you can see on the, the, the bottom right of the, if you can show that daily on Roblox, you can see the volume bars are indicating that institutions are getting in. And the story, it's, it, it's kind of interesting too, because this past weekend was my baby cousin's uh, birthday and she was asking my uncle for coins or, which are in, in the game, basically currency to buy different product within the game so she could play more and use different characters, what have you. But it, it's, it's definitely blowing up, not just for youth. I think I saw on streaming website on Twitch, which is Amazon's gaming uh, streaming service, that there was grown men playing this too. So there's something there. The fundamentals are showing that the sales growth is triple digits. If it pulls back, that would actually be healthy. The ADMA may be an area of interest if you haven't put a position on to maybe nibble at it, test it out. It did trigger an eight-week hold rule today, which is a, an indication that if a stock goes up 20% or more, and Don, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's within three weeks off a of pivot, you want to hold that stock and give it a chance for eight weeks. Uh, unless, of course, if it comes back down at your cost or goes low, that's just dumb. You're not going to – why would you give back your 20% gain? What it does provide is trying to hold on to a name potentially – to get greater than a 20% return. These are principles that O'Neill has laid out and I've worked for over 40 years. So this is one of the rules I'm trying to hold it and uh, I'm gonna try to apply that eight week hold rule to that name. The other theme, I wanna talk about a theme. So the middle class is kind of diminishing in my opinion from what I'm seeing. And people are taking loans out and renting a lot. And I think Tim had mentioned this name a couple months ago, RCII Rent-A-Center might be a stock that could potentially work moving forward with that theme of people needing loans and for whatever. And that middle class is running into that problem where they don't have that cash flow to just buy a couch or buy a TV. You can get a loan on anything now. So maybe this is a name that I'll keep on. If it breaks above those highs, RCII, um, if you go back to the daily, that, that's 64.79. If it comes through with volume, I'm buying. I'll buy that stock, but I'm going to wait till that, that breaks that high. That's it for me. All right. Don, uh, who has the, now listen, this is going to be released before. Uh, so Hunter's got the video Thursday. I've got the video Wednesday, uh, tonight. Uh, Don's got the 21 over 21 mm -hmm. Friday, night. Friday goes over his watch list, gets you ready for the, uh, coming trading week. Normally we're doing the show on a Friday and Don's got the nightly video, but that is not the case. So Don, what are you looking at? Uh, talk to me about the 21 over 21 and what you're thinking. Not only the 21 over 21, but a new list that I kicked off this last Friday, the Dirty 30, which were <laughs> gross stocks. There actually ended up being 70 gross stocks that uh, corrected 30% or more off of their February, mid-February highs. And some of those, Hunter alluded to, a couple of them are coming back. So we're, we're taking a look at that list, measuring the ones that are nowhere near coming back and should be completely kept off of your list of potential leaderships and the ones that are coming back nicely. And uh, some of them may make their way into the 21 over 21 list. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. There, what else there ha and there has been, uh, over the last about five or six trading days, a lot of these former broken leaders have been... Uh, acting better. Some of them are still permanently broken. Well, permanently for now, but usually the average leading stock when it breaks correct 72% off its highs and most of them uh, a lot and that's an average. So some of them are going to be 90, 95. Some of them are never going to come back. We're looking for the ones that have the potential to come back. All right. Uh, tell you what, Daniel, I, was that all you had done? I'm sorry. It sounded like, yeah. you were, okay. Uh, Daniel, I am remiss where I did not, uh, I've got one last thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save it because I didn't, I didn't let you uh, tell people how to get a hold of us. And I apologize for that. I got 
get caught up in the markets. Folks, listen, if you heard what, if you liked what you heard, you heard what you liked. Hold on, <laughs> hold, hold on a second. I also, we're going to save it for next week. I also didn't do why Tether could be a well, Tether, Tether, yes. Tether, Tether and stable coins. We didn't get the Tether. Which actually affects Bitcoin too. Guys. Yeah, we but didn't, we didn't get that. there and I apologize. That, is that, that's live action theater. Yeah, yeah. So. Folks, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, send them to revereasset.com. We won't spam them or email them in any way. It's up to them to reach out to us uh, for advice or help or a complimentary portfolio review. But they can sign up for this daily, for our daily market insight newsletter and this radio podcast, Your Money Radio podcast. And there's also a webinars page. You can sign up for Don's Lunch and Learn. It's got moved back to Wednesday, the second week of June. Don, when is that? What June, day? June 9th. June 9th. June 9th. You definitely want to sign up for that. That'll be live at noon Eastern time uh, for an hour during live market hours. Uh, Don will invite you into his computer and he'll show you what, what we're looking at. You can also email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, Tim, Don, Hunter, or Alex at revereasset.com. You can also call us old school at 855-REAL-WEALTH. Also... Uh, Real, Good, real quickly, we, we were talking about, is there a um, a travel ETF? A-W-A-Y is, oh. uh, has oh, some hey. broad exposure. I did not. I, A-W-A-Y? Is that oh, a way. Oh, yeah. Yep. I, you know, it's interesting. It Wasn't Home Away? It's giving me this. Do you see on the upper left-hand side of my screen where it says Home Away? I thought that was, but, but it clearly is uh, an ETF. I, I thought home homeway used to be a competitor yeah, yeah, to um, yeah. Airbnb. Is yeah. that still not the case? I'm I'm not. I think the they Tinker Swim it. does that with the ticker sometimes too. Yeah, where I see like a new company, but they'll leave that little name on the top left. Did it, did it, did Homeway get bought out? I I don't buy Airbnb. I want to see Airbnb as well. Uh, ooh, boy, I, I DV not only is my initials, but used to be Devry, but is now back as Double Verify Holdings. <laughs> a, a digital advertising company and it all look look to, to, to the IPO. point to the point it still has uh devry so uh, homeway there com redirects to verbo which is Airbnb. oh vrbo must have bought them yes i yes. gotcha yeah but yeah. well, you know that chart of a B, B, let's go back to that real quick there there's a a chart like if you were to just go with your gut of like well who's going to benefit here now i'm curious so we're going to do this live so, like, I would think Airbnb would be, like, people would be ready to just get out, you know, with all the, the openings and vaccinations and everything. Airbnb is, 219 was the high back in February. It's 126 right now. 127. Just oh, a excuse bit me, outside. Excuse me, 134. I was looking at the wrong number there. 134. Bob Euchre from Major League. Just a bit outside. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice reference. Now I'm looking. I want to look at Hilton. H-I, uh, what is Hilton? Somebody? H-I-L-T? H-L-T. 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 Thank you. HLT, but that looks a hell of a lot. Hill looks a hell of a lot better. Let's look at Marriott. Nah, they're all similar, but Air- they're everybody's been putting in a lot of policies lately, man. It's so really? hard. it's hard to juggle people nowadays. It used to be easy. Now everybody's got locks. They want to make sure you're not having any parties, or I can just go to a hotel. In some weird way, Airbnb's been putting in so many policies. I might prefer a hotel. Really? Seriously. Because we when we drove to Pennsylvania, I uh with the kids, which by the yeah. way, a lot of memories made there. Uh, <laughs> Not all of them good. Uh, they're, 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 they did well for the most part, but uh, Remy got bored, yeah. you know. And when you get sure, bored, sure. when you get bored, you start kicking things. That's right. And so, oh, <laughs> including your siblings. Yeah. <laughs> no, she. He act. He's he's awesome with her. He just. Uh, he's just like I wanted to get out of the car. Kid runs everywhere, man. So anyway, uh, I love Airbnb because of the kids. Yeah, for a family, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For for a couple, this is a couple. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I go for a hotel. Interesting, but uh, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what these travel like. Is this move over? Like Hunter, you were talking about AL. Let's look at UAL real quick. So they have a little more. They all look travel. relatively similar. Uh, I love. Like they're all just love consolidated. Is stronger. Love is stronger. Love it. So this is the difference between those names. Love is close to all time highs. Yeah. AAL is still down fifty percent. UAL is still down roughly fifty percent. So for what it's worth. Southwest is pretty much at what they were slash above what they were pre-COVID, whereas those other two big names are are still down roughly half from where they were. I think that's a really good place to do the dismount for the show. I can save my one last thing for some other time. There you go. Take us home, Dan. It was a really good job, Hunter. We'll talk to you next week on Your Money.